uh, Jesus was able to answer the scribes so accurately is because Jesus was a practicing Jew. He practiced the religion and the worship of the one God. I say that he was a practicing Jew because those Jews that don't practice the religion but just keep the label and wear the yarmulke, they're perpetrating Jews. Just like you got perpetrating Christians. They wear the cross, but they make it rain in the club. They wear the cross, but they smoking weed. They wear the cross, but their hearts is not right. They're not practicing Christians. They're perpetrating Christians. But don't worry, I'm coming up here to Islam too. You got a bunch of perpetrating Muslims as well. They wear the headpiece. They wear the bow tie. They wear the kufi. They, they, they chew the misrat stick. They got the sandals. They got the Arabic down pat but their actions don't correspond with what they profess. They're called perpetrating Muslims. Jesus was a practicing Muslim, uh, Christian. No, nah, no, nah, Christian, he was a practicing Hebrew. Are y'all with me? Jesus was always found in the temple studying and praying. Jesus didn't make excuses why he wouldn't go to the temple. Jesus didn't say, well, it snowed yesterday. Jesus didn't say, well, it's the playoffs, and I want to see the NFL playoffs, and then the Knicks. No, he didn't want to watch the Knicks. <laughs> but Jesus didn't make excuses for being in the temple. He was always praying. He was always studying. This is why he was able to answer that question. And guess what? Do you know what Jesus studied? He studied the same Old Testament that we read today. 2,000 years ago, Jesus was cracked the book open. And the first book that he went to in the Pentateuch, which is the five books of Moses, is the book of Genesis. And the very first chapter and the first verse of the book of Genesis, this is what Jesus read. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. So Jesus was not twisted when he knew that there was one God. Somebody say one God. One God. Somebody say Ahud. Kul hu Allah hu Ahud. Say he, Allah, is one. Come on and talk to me. So now if Jesus believed in the one God and he never instructed his followers to worship him, then where did this sun worship come from? Not the S-U-N worship. We just left the holiday called Christmas, which was all about sun worship. That's why the prophet Jeremiah was sent to the house of Israel to tell them, do not be dismayed by the signs in heaven. Because the, the heathen follows the signs. The heathen during the time of Jeremiah were sun worships, worshipers. That's where the Yule log comes from. That's where the little tiny bulbs on the Christmas tree comes from. Because they worshiped the sky. But we went from S-U-N worship to now S-O-N worship, worshiping Jesus as God. Everybody all right? All right. What we have to understand about religion is also religious history and the interventions and the additives that were put in the religion after Jesus died. One of those things is a doctrine called Christology. Somebody say Christology. Yeah. It's a Greek word that means the study of Christ. It deals with a numerous amount of topics, but there are two that I want to highlight uh, to you, which is number one, the belief that Jesus is a deity or a God. And number two, the preexistence of Jesus with God in heaven. Are y'all with me? All right. Jesus never taught this doctrine. He taught freedom, justice, and equality. This was added to the new faith called Christianity by white European theologians. Constantine, who was a pagan, who conquered Europe, 
decided to make the religion of Europe Christianity. But he wanted to keep his pagan worshipers in the Eastern Byzantine Empire happy. So that's why you have the intervention of multiple gods in the religion masked under a very tricky doctrine. Jesus didn't know nothing about this doctrine. An example of this, and it's ironic, is everybody all right? Yes, sir. An example of this is in the book of Genesis, it was the first chapter and the first verse that said in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. No mention of Jesus, is that right? But in the first chapter of the first verse of the book of John, which starts the New Testament, and the New Testament is written in Greek, it says, in the beginning was the Word. No mention of God in the first sentence. And then the word was with God, and the word was God, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Now, according to the Greek, the word W-O-R-D is logos. Somebody say logos. logos. And when you translate the word logos in Greek into English, it means word. It's the same logos in monologue. It's the same logos in uh, um, dialogue. It's the same logos in when you got to log in your hours or log in your miles and your log book. Log means word. And so what the historians and the theologians of Christianity, is everybody all right? What the theologians and the historians of Christianity say that this word is actually Jesus. So let me read to you how it is supposed to sound to Christian scholars. In the beginning was Jesus. And Jesus was with God. And Jesus was God. And then, and then Jesus was made flesh and dwelt among us. They have deified God, or pardon me, deified Jesus, thus taking God from one whole down to 50%. God and Jesus for you to worship. Are y'all with me? That was deep, right? But they reduced Jesus down even further, another 17%, when they introduced another doctrine in the Christianity called the Trinitarian Doctrine, the Doctrine of Three, or the Trinity. Anybody here from Trinidad in the house? Yeah, your name of your country was named after the Trinity. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Ghost. When you do that, you make each entity one-third. One-third, one-third, one-third equals one God. Over here, they made Jesus and God in the beginning, and this goes against the concept of everybody who believes in one God. It goes against monotheism that God is one. All praise is due to Allah. I want that to just marinate. I want you to go home and study it. But check this out. It was the most honorable Elijah Muhammad that got us out of sun worship. Because most of us in the nation, we came through the church and we have no disrespect for the church for we would never burn the bridge that got us to where we are today. We love our Christian brothers and sisters. Most of our families come from the church. But we got an issue, not with Jesus. We got an issue with those white so-called scholars that changed what Jesus said and put their own brand of thinking into the game. That's why the Honorable Elijah Muhammad would always say Christianity is the white man's religion because parts of it is the white man's doctrine going away from what Jesus taught. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad got us out of sun worship. He got us out of worshiping a mystery God. One of the things that blew my mind, brothers and sisters, is when I first read the book Message to the Black Man. I got stuck on the first chapter. 
The first chapter was so powerful, it made me want to read the whole book. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad teaches about the division of God. He says, for thousands of years, the people who did not have the knowledge of the person or reality of God worshiped their own ideas of God. He has been made like many things other than what he really is. The Christians refer to God as a mystery and a spirit, and they divide him into thirds. One part they call the Father, another part the Son, and the third they call the Holy Ghost, which makes the three one. This is both contrary to nature and mathematics. The law of mathematics will not allow us to put three into one. Our nature rebels against such a belief of God being a mystery and yet the father of a son and a Holy Ghost without a wife or without something in reality. We wonder how can the son be a human and, and the father a mystery or unknown or a spirit. Who is this Holy Ghost? that is classified as being equal to the Father and the Son. Let's give the most honorable Elijah Muhammad a round of applause. The most honorable Elijah Muhammad was committed to giving us the right spiritual foods. The honorable Elijah Muhammad knew that black life matters. We're still dealing with the two quotes from the Bible. I and my father are one. I am in the Father and the Father is in me. Is everybody all right? Yes, sir. Minister Farrakhan asked, he says, do you know what this means? I in the Father, the Father in me, I in you, and you in me. What is Jesus saying? He is saying that God's greatest grace is to give man guidance and wisdom to grow man into himself. Man is no longer man, but becomes a reflection of God. That is the goal of religion. You don't have to tell people who and what you are. You don't have to wear a cross or a star and crescent or a kufi for a person to figure out who and what you are. You and I should be perfect reflections of Almighty God Allah. So when a person stands next to you, stands beside you, they say to themselves, it's something special about that person. This person must be anointed. This person got the spirit of God because in our poor Allah God is coming out of us because we're trying to be at one with God. Allahu Akbar. The minister goes on to say, thus God is in man and man is in God. And I and God become one. How do you become one with God? Submit your will entirely to do the will of God. That means that five prayers daily alone is not entire submission. That means 30 days of fasting only is not entire submission. It means reading the Quran solely is not the a uh, quintessence of submission. When you submit your will to do the will of Allah entirely, you access power. Are y'all with me? Then the minister goes on to say, then God starts working in you, through you, so that as you walk, God is walking. If you talk God's will, God is talking. When you act God's will, God is acting. It is no longer God and a prophet, but it is God and extensions of God. This is why the Holy Quran says we, and we did this, and we did that. Not that there's more than one God. We bear witness in Ahad. Kul hu Allah, Ahad. Say he, Allah, is one. But Allah also mentions we in the Quran, and it is him and his extensions. It is him and his angels, which are men and women that he allow, allows to share in his power and in his process. Are y'all with me? One God. So how do we begin the process of being one with God? How many of y'all would least like to be one with God before you die? Yes, sir. 
or at least to the day you die. How do we begin the process of being at one with God? The minister said in his Morgan State address in Baltimore, Maryland, he says it starts with loving God with all your heart, your mind, your soul and your strength. We can't look at the word love like I love chicken. I, I, I love Drake's new song, Truffle Butter. I, I, I love loving hip hop. You can't say that in the same sentence with, I love God. You got to love God with all your heart, all your mind, all your soul, all your strength. You got to love God so much that you are willing to give up and deny yourself things that give you pleasure if those things go against his will. That's called total love. And he says, don't you know when you love God like that, you want to draw close to God. You want to feed on the word of God. When you love God with all your heart, your mind, and your soul, you start reading more. You start studying more. You start publicly praising God. There was a time that you would just say praise God in your mind. But you don't care who's around, who's listening. If you at your job, you say praise God. Hallelujah. Alhamdulillah. Allahu Akbar. Because you love God and you don't care who rejects you for loving God. All praise is due to Allah. When you love God like that, you have this desire to access Allah's mind. The scripture says, let this mind be in you. The same mind that was in Christ Jesus. When you love Allah like that, you want to grow so hard, you start thinking more globally. How can I affect my people in a better way? You begin start to, to, to uh, post positive messages on your internet when you used to just deal with foolishness. When you love God like that. Now, I got to put balance to this, brothers and sisters, because, you know, as a representative in the ministry, I should be representing God. I should be representing God's man. But I have to warn you that being at one with God does come with a price. Buyer beware. As soon as you make the decision to seek a spiritual Union with God. Instantly, you receive hatred, scrutiny, and pushback from this world. And most times it starts with your family members and your homies and your girls. So if you're the type of person that needs other people's approval to give yourself validation and worth, you need to relook at yourself because being at one with God is not going to work with you. If greater is he, it's in the world is greater than the God is in you. Are y'all with me? The 15th chapter of John, this is Jesus talking. He says, if the world hates you, know that it hated me before it hated you. So if someone is drinking haterade because you want to get down and, and be a more godly, it's all right. They not only hated Jesus, they hated Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. They hated Abraham. They hated all prophets because all prophets were raised when the entire world was in the state of mayhem. And God tried to call those people to come back to him. And just like most people. That's at a party. If somebody pulls the plug or someone fights and they say, yo, the party is over, people get mad. People want their money back. People want to go try to find another club to party at. People don't like stop having a good time, even if having a good time is against God's will. 19 first says, if you were of the world, the world would love you. You follow what I'm saying? Yes, sir. But because you are not of the world, but I have chosen you out of the world, therefore the world hates you. 
This is why we got to build our own world, our own environment, our own community. This is why we have to develop the love between each other. I'm talking to the believers because when we develop the love and the unity amongst us, we don't want to be nowhere else except for where we get in the love. Everybody needs love, brothers and sisters. This is what we're calling you to, a community of love, a community of brothers and sisters who are striving their hardest to obey, obey Almighty God, Allah. Now, Jesus' words in the 20th verse, he says, remember the word that I say unto you, the servant is not greater than his Lord. That should end all arguments about Jesus being God. Because Jesus always said, there is nothing of myself that I do. I only do what the Father commands. I am a servant of the Father. So Jesus said, the servant is not greater than his Lord. If they have persecuted me, they will also persecute you. As we prepare to close, is everybody all right? Yes, sir. This relationship of God being father and Jesus being son, it's something for us to look at. Because we're talking about the duality of a master and a servant. And all of the accolades of Jesus being a master is because he submitted to the servant and actually embodied the servant because he obeyed the servant. I mean, the, the master's instructions. Are y'all with me? The same dynamic exists with the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan and the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. It's clear that Minister Farrakhan is the son of the Most Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Not a son begotten by a woman, but a son from his spirit, from his mind. And